I have three more episodes for you to listen to. If you haven't already, this is a countdown leading up to Rooted in Retail's first birthday. And there's a good chance that you haven't maybe listened to every single episode. And so I wanted to call attention to a few of my favorites from the archives. Honestly, this is so hard to pick because there's been incredible guests and conversations. But these three that I'm going to share today are in the very beginning. They're still tried and true things that I still believe in that you could still use today. And they were some of my favorite guests. So the first one is episode two with Kathy Wagner. We're talking about money, honey. I call her the profit lady. That is what the episode is called. It's all about making more money, understanding your margins, where your money is going and how to increase profits. I mean, without that, you don't have a business. So you need to listen to Kathy's episode if you haven't already. Then episode three, right after that, is Mark Schaefer. Mark was one of my keynote speakers at my 2023 Evolve. And this episode is all about the humanized approach to business. This is the way that you're going to stand out from big box retailers and Amazon and really grow your business, thrive, and ideally be the most successful that you ever have if you are implementing these things that Mark talks about. These are really important topics. And I think now more than ever, we filmed this last year in 2023. This is 2024. It's still so incredibly valuable. So listen to Mark. And then finally, Nick with One Shop was one of my favorite conversations. Nick has so much energy and so much insight into email marketing and text marketing and the industry and just really how retailers can sell more, drive more traffic. I felt like Nick and I were like, boom, 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 just almost another masterclass in marketing and digital marketing. You're going to love what Nick has to say. It's so relevant still to this day. So listen to those, some of the very beginning episodes, and I hope that you really enjoy them. Thank you for listening. Let's dive into this episode. I had a lovely conversation with Andrew and Claire Bowen, the authors of the best voted coffee book, The Daily Grind. And I am really excited for this episode for Rooted in Retail because it's not necessarily a retail specific like gift and home and pet and jewelers type of business, but it's coffee shops. And I think it's so important when we look outside of our industry, we can learn a lot. And of course, with coffee shops, there are some similarities. So in this episode, you're going to hear what Andrew and Claire have created and how, how to turn your passion into a profitable business. Some of those must-haves. And man, one of the things that Andrew says I couldn't agree more with, we are like so on the same page. There's definitely a lot of overlap with retail and coffee shops. We also talk about money and finances and budgeting. They give some really great tools and mindsets and exercises to build into your business to make sure that you are tracking effectively and budgeting effectively and some of those misconceptions and mishaps that cafes have when they're starting their business. We also talk about what a healthy net percentage is of how much these cafes and coffee shops should be bringing home. And I, I don't know about you, but I always love like, where are you at? Where's the industry standard? Where should we be? So I found that really interesting in today's episode. I think that you're going to love them and they work with, you're going to hear an accent, which was also really lovely to, uh, to hear on my end. And they're in the UK, but over 70% of their book sales have been within the US. They have members that they coach a lot of those people are here in the U.S. as well. So if you are thinking about opening a coffee shop or adding it to your retail store or have a cafe and want to be more profitable, then you can work with them. They don't work with just people in the U.K. Before we dive in, here's a little bit more about my guests. Andrew and Claire Bowen are award-winning coffee shop and cafe coaches. Having previously built a chain of coffee shops in the U.K., their number one bestseller, The Daily Grind, how to Open and Run a Coffee Shop That Makes Money has been voted one of the best coffee books of all times. They support startups and established coffee business owners worldwide to build unique coffee shops and cafes that are profitable from opening day onwards. One of the best places to connect with them is over on Instagram. They are coffeepreneurs, love their handle, and definitely check them out online and their book. And let's dive into today's episode. Welcome to Rooted in Retail. I'm your host, Crystal Vilkaitis. 
Here we have engaging and informative conversations with successful indie retailers and industry experts. Together, we learn, connect, and grow. Don't miss our live after the show every Tuesday night in the Rooted in Retail Facebook group. All right, here's today's episode. Andrew and Claire, welcome to Rooted in Retail. I'm thrilled you're here. Yeah. Thank um, you very much. And thank you for having us on. We're delighted to be here. It's lovely to meet you at last. Yes, I know. It's so great to meet you. And I have to share right away that I have always had a dream of having a coffee shop. <laughs> so I am like selfishly so excited for this interview. And I actually just did another podcast interview and my guest was saying how it's so important for us to look at other industries to learn from. And so here on Rooted in Retail, our listeners are independent retailers. Some do have coffee shops in their stores, but I'm just so excited because you are a little bit of a different type of business. However, a lot of the same principles of a small business and local business. So very excited for this conversation. First off, I want to say that your book, The Daily Grind, has been voted one of or I want to say the best <laughs> coffee book, but one, <laughs> one of the best copy books. So congratulations on that. Yep, thank thank you. you. Now, some of our listeners might be at the crossroads of turning their passion into a profitable business like you guys did. Could you walk us through a couple of the strategies you discuss in the daily grind that helped transition your love for coffee into a successful and scalable business model? Well, we, we we actually wrote the daily grind while we still had our chain of coffee shops, while we were still working in the in the coffee shops, and we wrote it so that other people didn't make mistakes. We wrote it in a logical way that we wished we'd had a, like a business manual like it when we first started. So it starts from the very beginning of why you want to open, and and that will instruct you where you open, and the right location. And would you like? To yeah, I think. The why is really important. Mm -hmm. I think if you're going to retail and hospitality are very similar, that you need to be passionate about it. You've got to under, you've got to love talking to customers every day. You've got to you've got to love have that interaction. If you don't like that, then you shouldn't really consider opening a coffee shop. You'd be amazed how many people come to us and think, actually, I never want to work in there. I just want to print some money. And mm -hmm. actually, it's not quite the way it works. I think every successful coffee shop we come across and, and retail business, in fact, has got a passion at the beginning. It might get diluted 50 or 100 shores down, but in reality, that the, the crux of it is that why. The second bit really is around the location. We talk about you would never open a, a vegan restaurant at the back of a meat market. People, you've got to, people don't travel very far for a coffee yeah. shop. They're a bit lazy in reality. They're time pressed. So it needs to be, it needs to fit in with their daily routine. So it's got to be in the right location. Yeah. On top of that, you've got to get the right product. You've got to be famous for something. Yeah. There is, again, there's no point in our book opening a Me Too. It's not just opening and selling notes. People come to us sometimes, yeah, what's your vision? Well, we love to open a coffee shop that sells lovely coffee and great cakes. For sales of God. Yeah. You, you've got to be famous for me. You've got to be famous for whether it's a, the best vegan menu in town or it's, where it's the best burrito or whether it's the best ice cream or the best dessert. You've got to be famous for something. You've got to give people something to recognize you for and be able to talk about when you're not in the room sort of thing. That's the, that's really the two sort of the critical things, getting the why, getting the location, and then thinking about what you're going to be famous for. I love that you said that because I often tell our retailers to think about being 15 mile famous. What does it look like if everybody in a 15 mile radius knew your coffee shop, knew your store name, knows what you sell? I couldn't agree with you more. It's all about that top of mind, but really like knowing how to say it, what you sell, what you stand for, and having that thing that you're famous for it creates that destination and that popularity. Those are great tips as well. The passion and the location, completely agree. So good. Awesome. Okay, now I read on your website that 80% of new coffee shops fail, which is crazy. And I have a guess that they fail because of money and finances and budgeting, but I could be wrong. I, I know we see that with small businesses across the land, right? That you've got to be good with your numbers. And so in your experience, what are the most common misconceptions independent retailers or coffee shop owners have about budgeting and financial planning? 
And how should they approach these areas to ensure the longevity and growth of their businesses? Yeah, I think you've nailed it on the head. Numbers this is a big one. And a lot of people, they write their business plan in the beginning and they work out their numbers, work out their margins and everything, and then they forget about it. It's gone. Mm. Um, and they don't have a cash flow forecaster or they don't have a little pot of money put aside for the inevitable things that go wrong. They spend all their money on opening this beautiful building and wonderful, but things do go wrong and then they haven't got any money to back it up and they get tireder and tireder because they haven't got the money to do refits yeah. and things like that. Part of the problem is oh, fundamentally coffee shop is the, the lower end of hospitality in terms of cost to open up. So pretty much everyone, anybody with 10, 15,000, even less could open a coffee shop in their head. Um, right. So it, it, it's and on the other side of it, people then see the margins because in the newspapers, on the media, every five minutes is the margin on a coffee. Everyone knows it costs less than a dollar to make it, mm -hmm. a cup of coffee and everyone knows they sell it for six. So, well, that's massive margin. So there's two conflicting things there in people's heads and on top of that once they're in there they don't keep on top of the numbers they'll wait for the accountant perhaps to give them a, re a report in about six months time if they're lucky or three months time or not at all or in the end of the year when all the things so they don't really know all they're looking at is their cash balance in their cash cash account and actually that can look quite flattering when you first set up because you buy your, your stuff in to sell you sell it and then you eventually pay the supplier so your bank balance can look very flattering and people don't budget yeah and one piece of advice we say to everyone and i'm not sure because it's easily doable within coffee shops and cafes is to do a weekly stock day do a weekly stock okay. and calculate your profit weekly so it's not going to be perfect but you know what you started with what you ordered what you left with how much you paid in wages how much you on average you pay in rent and rates for the week and how much you sold with those numbers, you're able to work out actually how much did I actually make last week. Mm -hmm. And if you could do that every single week, and if you set aside an hour to take stock uh, and do the calculation, in fact, if it's even less if you do it on a EPOS, the EPOS system there, we, we operate a sort of a sort of quality that you'd only get in a corporate 10, 15 years ago. So we've got all that ability, crunch numbers really quickly. And that is a real game changer when people start mm -hmm. doing that and they're getting the numbers regularly and they can see every week i've made five hundred dollars i've made a thousand dollars or i've lost a thousand dollars what do i need to do next week without waiting for the end of the month to come you know exactly i mean how many listeners are listening to this like hands up yep you made these budgets or these ideas months ago or years ago and you haven't looked at it again i'm guilty like we've set <laughs> goals and our budget. And then I haven't looked at the spreadsheet in months. I'm like, why am I not paying more attention to this? So that's excellent advice. And I love the idea of just being consistent an hour a week or less. Every single business owner can find that time, especially when it's so important when we're talking about your numbers. And then I would assume it's going to be a lot easier for you to forecast when you have such a great grasp on your numbers because you're in there every week. Yeah. And forecasting particularly with coffee shops. I was in retail for 25 years before I came over to uh, hospitality. So and well, and I was used to the, the seasonality of retail and the growth and the, the certain the holidays and, and the sales peaks. But when we when I came over to hospitality, it blew me away the difference because you, you just need a really hot day or you need a traffic jam or you need, you know, a school holiday or you need three or four things come together. And instead of having a double in sales, you'll have 10 times sales. You could mm -hmm. have one week where you're doing a $300 a day. And the next day on the same day, you're done three grand. And it, it just, where'd that come from? And it's something in retail, yeah. in, in, in sort of general retail, you wouldn't necessarily see that sort of jump, but within, yeah. within hospitality, it's, it's critical. Mm -hmm. So, and the weather is a key driver of that. Mm, interesting. Yep. I could see that. And I do know some of our retailers struggle with that too, or like, when construction is happening and there's things you just can't control outside yeah. of your business, you know, it's such a bummer because you've been in retail for 25 years before. I would just love to know, can you share just a quick blimp of what you did? And did you then go right into coffee or did you do something else after that? No, I, I worked for a large, um, retailer. Actually, I started as a general assistant filling the butters on the, in the butter cabinet. That's what I was doing on the dairy. 
So that's what oh. I did for, and then I, I, I eventually worked my way through, ended up running a, a top five shop in the UK and then worked in Europe for them opening. And I worked on the small convenience stores in the UK at the latterly and then in central Europe. So I've done sort of big stores, little stores, you know, international, everything. So it's, but when I came across to, um, and I spent all my time really looking about change management and sort of the, the Six Sigma stuff around improving consistency and looking at systems and processes. And a lot of that came across to hospitality, but there's an awful lot of hospitality that's just about talking to people and being nice to people. And I, I think that's more like in the smaller retail, it was a big box retail. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, quite, although we reported to sort of worry about our, our, our customers, ultimately we were more worried about the bottom line and, ha and, and managing the massive scale. Whereas in a smaller unit, you can get, to, you get very friendly and get to know all your customers. And it's really critical. We found that that involvement with the community within hospitality was so important. And that's what in our book again, and, and, and the stuff we talk about, we, we work with people is to help them develop that community relationship. Mm. As you say, that 15 minutes of uh, 15 mm. miles of fame, I think that's, that's a mm. brilliant phrase. Yeah. Well, and I love it. We'll link to the book too. I feel like our retailers need to, to listen to it or read it. And I actually, ha I interviewed a retailer, Jenny, with Jenny Kay, who also has a coffee shop. And that's exactly what she was talking about in her episode too, about the power of community. And I think that it is really critical for our local businesses. Now, our retailers, like I mentioned, some of them have coffee shops inside of their store. But some of these retailers, they are gift shops, they're interior designers, they're toy shops. Like I feel like adding a coffee element could be a new way of thinking for them. So in, in thinking about that, for our listeners that might be dreaming up opening their own cafe, and this could be even a separate location, doesn't have to be in their store, but I think either could work here. Could you outline some key exercises or tools that will help them accurately predict startup costs and realistically estimate sales potential? We did talk about checking in on those numbers once a week, so I'm sure that's one of those. Anything else that you would add to that? On our, on our website, we've got lots and lots of material that people can download to work out how much money they they think they're going to, to to take and what equipment they need and what space they need. We've got a lot of resources already on our website that people can access. But I also think that having a coffee shop as an addition to an existing business is brilliant. As long as, you know, as long as it, it complements each other. And it, it is a really good, a good way of utilizing space that to make more money than just having things on shelves. The watch out is, of course, you're going to be running an extra, another business. Yeah. And actually you might not want to, it is quite an intense business. If I was giving anybody a recommendation and they have a, a retail unit and they had a bit of space in the corner, they want, they could see a coffee, a business would work in, it would be complimentary to their business. It would be good for their customers. It would have a bit of ambience to the whole place. They might bring new customers in. But they didn't have the experience. I, there are a lot of people out there are starting off in the coffee business who are perhaps trained baristas who are looking for a start. Now that sort of location would be perfect for somebody like that to so almost rent off them. So for the retailers yeah. themselves, it would be massively low risk apart from giving a bit of space and a grand rules and all that sort of stuff around what they don't want them cooking fried foods in a corner of a right. you know, car they are or something. So it's the it's exactly. real grand rules you need to do. But I think that's the sort of thing you could look for a, a partner, a local mm. partner to, to take on and have it as a cart. Start with a cart, perhaps just a wheel of cart in. Um, yeah, we've worked, with, we've worked with people and we've, we've suggested just that. Put a cart in there, tables and chairs and start off like that before you uh, invest in putting the whole yeah. equipment in and making it a standalone um, coffee shop or cafe. Yeah. If you've got a bigger unit, and we work with independent um, retailers in the UK, actually, who've got independent departmental stores, who've got a, a dedicated cafe, and that works really well. But it is a completely different department, and it is a, you need a manager in there. And it, it, it becomes a, a monster if you're not careful. The success of it yeah. is the, actually is, is part of, will become part of your problem. Yeah, that's so true. I love the idea of starting with a cart. If you're playing with this idea that's so low risk, yeah. 
great way to just test it out a little bit, see how your customers are resonating. Yeah. If they're excited about that, do they stay longer with a cup of coffee in their hand? Because I feel like I would. And so, but then if you've got that space or that desire, that passion to really go bigger and add that element, yeah, you really got to treat it almost, in my opinion, what I'm hearing you say is like a second business. Like it's not just, oh, our kind of side thing. This is a whole nother you know, and they may even brand it to be its own entity yeah. or its store names, coffee shop or something. But it does sound like there's some cool potential there if it's the right situation. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the, the watch out is to what you end up with a symbiotic business. And it's often difficult once you've got those to work out what the benefits are of the business is that join together. There is obviously a business and sometimes pure numbers don't just do that. You might say, actually, that sales per square foot of that cafe is less than the jewelry department, but ultimately without the, uh, without the cafe in there, you, your sales and jewelry department are going to be down anyway. So it's hard. And that's often where mm -hmm. people go wrong when they take things out, they look at it, we call numbers, supermarkets and, and Mal's over here have done that. They've taken away the cafe because on paper as a standalone business, it doesn't really make wash your face, but ultimately when they take it away, they realize the whole lot suffers. Mm, interesting. Oh, that's really interesting. Okay, now staying on this numbers with margins, I was talking to one of our retail partners recently about what an, a standard retailer's profit margin is. Like a healthy profit margin, it's low in the retail industry. When she told me, I was like, whoa, she said about 5%, seven and a half, try to get them up to 10%, you know, but it is pretty low. Wow. What is a standard profit percentage for coffee shops? Well, it can start off at zero or minus. If part of the problem is it's too easy to start. But right. ultimately, your objective really should be between 15 and 20%. Anything between 10 and 20, 15 would be good. The okay. business model is it's typically high fixed cost with a, a high gross margin. So once you cover the growth, once you cover the fixed costs, so once you've got enough sales to cover those fixed costs and the wages, then the gross margin is typically 70%. Then that drops in. So everything above break even figure. You're looking at 50% of that drop is straight the bottom line. So if you get volume through it, you can, can easily achieve 20, 25% gross margin, uh, uh sorry, um, uh, bottom line, but ultimately right. anything 10 to 15 first year, I'd be happy for 10, um, you know, okay. average business, I'd be 15 to 20 be looking for. Okay. Awesome. Those are really great metrics for us to follow along, especially if we're brand new to this and yeah. curious about doing it. Big one on there, which everyone seems to underestimate is that gross margin. When I say to somebody, your gross margin, a typical retail will work on what a gross margin, 25 to 30% potentially. Within hospitality, a lot of people tell you, you can get away with, so McDonald's are operating on about 60, 65% gross margin, but they've got massive volume and they end up with minimal percentage as well. They're almost like a retail grocery retailer for a, for an independent coffee shop cafe. You must be aiming for at least 70, 75% gross margin. So every dollar you buy in, you've got to sell it for at least four or five times that. Um, okay. To, okay. To, to make, to okay. just cover the costs and to make, make the business go. I have exciting news in honor of Rooted in Retail's first birthday. We launched this show on March 5th of last year. And to celebrate, we are giving away five tickets to our in-person marketing conference called Evolve. So if you can come to Denver, Colorado, April 28th and 29th, and you want to go to Evolve, which who doesn't, then you can register to win. Go to crystalmediaco.com slash win. You must register by February 29th, leap day. We will pick our five winners and announce those on March 1st. I hope to see you at Evolve and good luck and happy birthday to Rooted. Thanks for listening. It means the world. Okay. That's so helpful. And again, like you mentioned, having the resources on your website. So we'll be linking to that too, which is so helpful. And then they got to get the book. Now the retail and hospitality industry faces constant evolution and challenges from your extensive coaching experience. Can you share a story of how an independent cafe overcame a significant industry change or challenge and what lessons our listeners could take away from that? Um, yeah. Um, an example of, of uh, one of our clients um, asked, asked for our help because they were so, so busy and they were actually having a lot of, of bad reviews online where people were saying they were waiting too long or it wasn't. Food was wrong. That something was wrong. 
so we actually worked with those those people for a year, and we totally stri- stripped everything back. We re-looked at the menu so that we could see what were the things they were doing that were taking too long and not making any money, and so we could do get rid of those and work on the things that were easier to make, easier to reproduce, and made more money for them. We redesigned all the uh, the ergonomics inside the shop. They were delivering um, uh, all, everything to the table, which took a lot of workforce. So we actually rearranged it. So things like the coffee or the tea or the cake, the customer could order and take away. And then they brought the food that took a bit longer to the table. And that freed up an awful lot of manpower. Yeah. And one other thing we did with that was looked at the, in terms of the ergonomics of the space as well, they were operating a lot of cafes, coffee shops, diners tend to have a very small back area because they want to maximize the number of seats they've got, which is absolutely fine. But in this instance, they were so busy that their volume, they couldn't cope. They just wasn't a physical enough room behind the counter in the kitchen to, to produce what they wanted to produce. So we literally looked at it and moved their counter forward. It was only about 18 inches, yeah. moved it forward 18 inches and that allowed a, a flow of people coming in and out. And that one thing on its own just reduced the stress levels because every time previously somebody was coming, excuse me, I gotta get through the kitchen and I can move mm. away from the mm. checkout and all that sort of stuff and move away from the coffee machines that weren't passed. And because they started off and they built this business and they, they couldn't quite see, and it was part of their success that caused the problem. Uh, and these bottleneck products that Claire's talking about in the kitchen, they were like, they're, some of them were like the holy cows, the, the holy grail of we've got to do those, we've always done those. When we looked at them, with them in the cool light of day, they were very low a volume, mm. very low margin. And every time somebody ordered them, the staff would go, oh my God, no, they, they wouldn't even see the face, the, the dread of all oh, their face. Oh no, I got to make that. I was going to take me five minutes. So I got to get behind on everything. Mm. So we just, we were quite, it took us, it was a journey because these, mm. you know, these, these things were, they, it was a granny's recipe and all that sort of stuff. It was something mm. that they thought was important for them. And ultimately, they had so much that was a, that, that, that else in that business that was really good, that losing this little bit didn't really matter. Well, that, uh, but since then, you know, they, 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 their customer complaints have come right down and they're even busier and the staff are less stressed. Good for them and thankful for you guys that came in and really helped them. I think that I say this a lot. It's hard to see the picture when you're in the frame. Yeah. And it sounds like this coffee shop couldn't identify those things because we're just in it. We yeah. all experience that as business owners, even just moving that and having fl- freeing up 18 inches. I felt like, Ooh, less chaos, like less kind of craziness, just that feels a little bit more calmer and easier and just has that more flow. And I love how you guys went in there and really re just helped in so many ways. I love that. I feel like a lot of our listeners right now are probably like, I would love somebody to come in and do that for me. Show me the picture that I'm in. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now, you guys, as I was researching, you have done so many incredible things. I'm just really impressed. You are new to me. A lot of the guests that I have come on this show, I've known, I met at different shows or, or know the retailer. You guys are newer to my world. And I was so glad that you got brought into my world because I loved researching you and what you guys are doing. You've done some really incredible things, building this business and having your top selling book and you're keynoting and speaking all over the place. So what is your, what do you, I was just like, I want to know, what are you professionally most proud of? And I'd love for you each to answer that. I'll start then. On, then. I'm, I'm, I'm very, very proud of, that we wrote the book and we actually made time to write the books. We were running uh, our own chain of coffee shops at the time, but we wrote the book and it's actually taken off far better than we ever thought. Um, we, we thought it would be like a business card to say, oh, we've written a book, so we must know what we're talking about. But I'm truly amazed at the number of people who come up to us at as, as trade shows and things like that and say, oh, I've read your book. Oh, thank you. I, I've dipped in and out and there's, there's post-it notes in their book and all the rest of it. It's, it's our job to help people to stop them making mistakes and make them successful. Mm. Well, that's what we do. And it's wonderful to talk to people who have, a pre, who have used our book. Yeah, and... to, see all, to see all those coffee shops that were opened and because they read our book and they, they felt it made a difference to them. Yeah. So that's a big, that's probably my top one as well. I think 
the other thing we're proud of really is 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 running our business for as long as we did successfully. We had some disasters along the way. Uh, we started off as franchisees, and within within eight to two years, our franchises all went bust. So it left us high and dry. And then, of course, we had the, re- the recession of two thousand nine again, which we were out of. We managed to well, manage just the wrong pre- wrong phrase, but by a stroke of luck, we were out out of it. We sold our last shop by the COVID. So fortunately, we didn't have to endure that, which I know was horrendous. I know for our clients, it was horrendous. Um, but we didn't have to operate yeah. our business through that. Um, but yeah, I think the fact that we sort of operated a profitable business through thick and thin and saw a lot of people develop and move on through, through, you know, through working with us. And also people enjoyed coming into our shops and we saw people get together, have kids, get married, kids grow up. So that was something that's really nice as well. We can't, one of our shops is, is very local to where we live. The other two are quite that clo- close, but whenever we go into town now, we, sub- yeah. we see so many people that uh, we, we got to know over the years. That gives you a nice statement as well. No kidding. Oh, I love that so much. I just feel like, again, being part of the community is something that is so special. And you have almost this duty to show up for the community and yeah. you build, it almost becomes your family, yeah. you know, if, if you let it. And that's what I hope our retailers and our listeners do. And it sounds like you did that. Yeah. No, it's a big responsibility. Um, so for, you know, yeah. for, for your family, for your community, for yourself and for the people that work for you, mm-hmm. you it is a big responsibility. Yeah. Now, and it sounds like one of those proud moments is being resilient during these down times. Are you ready to go into the resilience round? <laughs> go on, man. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Best business book. Oh, I would say Michael Gerber. Yeah, Michael Gerber. We love Michael Gerber. We love sort of the e myth revisited. There are lots out there. You know, yeah. we like Danny Meyer, Set Setting the, the Table. table. Yeah, there's another. Close. And reasonable hospitality, that's another good one. But we keep on going back yeah. for the fundamentals, the email. Yeah. Yep, that's a good one. And we got to plug the Daily Grind in there too. Oh, well, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> we don't like plugging our own book. <laughs> no, <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Best retail technology, like an app or software? I think I would say a, a really good EPOS system. And as Andrew said earlier, the EPOS systems now are so good and so available to the small independent. Mm. But as long as you put the, the right information in, there's no point in getting all your margins and everything off, off your EPOS if you haven't put the right figures in and kept on top of it. Yeah. And let me ask, because I feel like we might call it something different here. Or is it, e- or I just don't know the coffee industry. Is it EPOT, like P-O-T or EPAR? Yeah, electronic point of sale. So like a till. Electronic point of sale. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. P-O-S. Got yeah, it. P-O-S. That's what we always say yeah. here. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree with that. Yeah. Good one. Okay. How do you keep up with the ever-changing retail and or coffee shop industry? We're a bit lucky because we speak to lots of people, um, you know, all the time. Yeah. That helps. Yeah. And we drink lots of coffee. So we're always visiting new <laughs> coffee shops and talking to people. We, we um, read uh, uh, business magazines. We have uh, in Propel newsletter. Yeah, there's, a Propel, there's a big newsletter in the UK. I don't know whether you get something similar over there, but it's like the, the Bible, the hospitality. It's called Propel. And we read that every day. It's a really good digest of what's going on in the industry. Awesome. Um, and okay, you know, awesome. do trade shows and stuff like that. So, we, I, and whenever we go out, we were in the states last year. We just sought out independence and and uh, wanted to find new stuff that's going on. We're very inquisitive when we're out and about. Yes, we're we're always talking to everybody. So <laughs> we're, we're always fun oh yeah. The, 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 the that's the best way. Good old networking, yeah. right? You know, yeah. and just hearing from other people to help retailers be more stronger, more rooted in success. What's a company culture best practice? It's fundamentally recruiting for attitudes rather than experience, mm. giving people the headroom and the time to develop and encourage them, and also to be quite flexible with them as well, to be able to be flexible if they go off to have a baby or if they want to want, want time off for a, for a, for a career break or you've got to, you've got to, there's no point in being like Grinch and the cost of recruiting good people is massive. Yep. But the reward of having great people mm-hmm. is unbounded almost. So 
it, it is uh, getting the right attitude to begin with rather than the right skill set because the skill set you can train in. Yeah. Yep. I couldn't agree more. That's so good. If you had to start your business all over again, what's one thing you'd do differently? We would not be a franchisee. No. We would have used the money that we bought into a franchisee to become a franchisee and used it to research our own brand and what we wanted to do. We would have worked in other coffee shops to get our experience to know exactly what we were dealing with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, ditto. I think that's tomorrow's newspaper will be helpful. That's all you need. Yeah. But we did our research. We thought it was the best thing to do. I was, I'd come from a, um, from a corporate world and I thought I needed that corporate help and support. But as it happened, um, the stuff that we got from the franchise, we could have, you know, if we'd have spent six months longer and spent the same amount of money training ourselves, yeah. investing ourselves rather than investing in somebody else to help us, I think we would have, we would have done. I'm not better, much quicker. Well, I do think that at the time that we started, there wasn't, um, you know, people would say, um, can I have a cup of coffee? Do you want milk and sugar? That's that's what the, the state of the, the coffee market was. So it was, we were at the very beginning. So I think rather than being player's calf, I wanted to be uh, in, a, in a bubble that, that yeah. would teach me properly yeah. how to run a business. It did and... feel comfortable at the time, but again, you need tomorrow's newspaper. Yeah. That's one of those questions, really. Well, I think if I had tomorrow's newspaper, yeah. oh, we would have def definitely done that. Just wish there was a little Andrew and a little player on my <laughs> shoulder telling me. I, well, I was going to say, yeah, if they had, if you had the daily grind and had coaching, you don't have to go down the franchising and then you have so much more freedom, I would imagine, and creativity and flexibility and what you can do. So that's a great one. Final question. What does the future of retail look like? It's not going to get easier for that one. Okay. Um, it's, it's, it's tough at the moment. It's always been tough ever since I it was, you know, 25 I was, years I was in it. I think probably we had three or four years, which are amazing. Um, but then you soon get taken back down to earth. The people that succeed are the guys that listen to their customers, I think, and actually, mm -hmm. and the ones that are actually a bit more niched or a little bit more sort of specialist. And they build a community. The more community support that the independent business gets, the, the better it's going mm -hmm. to be. The, we talk about getting people a, a tribe of super fans. The more people can build that tribe of super fans to support them in the business. Because we want to support independent retailers. They want to. They won't if they get bad service or if the prices are ridiculous or they're not open every day because the, the, their trading hours are, they go when they open the clothes that they want. And those are the things that you've got to, you've got to give that consistency, I think, to be able to play on, on, on level fields with, with the big boys. But yeah, I think it is, you know, it's, it's never easy. It's not going to get any easier, um, but you know, the fittest will survive. So true. Excellent advice. Where can people learn more about you? Probably the simplest is go to um, Insta. We're at Copypreneurs. Or if you have a look on our website, we've got cafesuccesshub.com and startupacoffeeshop.com. So those are the two main websites we use. But yeah, please follow us on Insta and DM us and comment or whatever. And we'd love to see your coffee shops and, you, and, and what you do. Yeah, I love it. Oh, I love that idea of any of our retailers that have a coffee shop in their store or if you have a have one or you launch one, let Claire and Andrew know and, and show pictures and tag them and tag me too because I want to see them as well. You guys, thank you so much for your time and sharing some of your knowledge here today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Keep on doing what you're doing. It's really great. It's been a pleasure to be on this show. Okay. Awesome. Thank you guys. Everybody remember that I'm rooting for your success. Have a great week ahead. Bye. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. Don't forget to join the Rise and Shine newsletter, which is social media news you need to know sent via email every Monday morning. Go to crystalmediaco.com slash rise to join. And don't miss the newest episode of Rooted in Retail, which drops every Sunday morning.